Welcome to Researchpedia. In this video, we're going to explore the architecture of ChatGPT5 step by step. Now, you might be wondering, why even look at the architecture? Well, just like understanding the blueprint of a house helps you see how everything fits together, looking inside ChatGPT5 helps us understand how it thinks, responds and improves over time. Don't worry, this won't be full of overwhelming jargon. My goal is to explain everything in a simple and clear way, so even if you're new to AI, you'll be able to follow along. Here's the big picture. ChatGPT5 is more than just a single model. It's a complete system. When you type a question, it doesn't just magically answer. Behind the scenes, there are layers of components working together. Input processing to understand text, images or audio. Safety checks to make sure the interaction is safe and respectful. Retrieval are memory systems that fetch facts and remember useful context. The GPT-5 brain, which generates the response. And finally, streaming output, so you see the answer in real time. Throughout this video, I'll walk you through each of these blocks step by step. By the end, you'll have a crystal clear picture of how your words transform into the intelligent, flowing replies you see on screen. Ever wonder what happens between you asking a question and getting an answer from chat GPT-5? In the next few minutes, I'll peel back the curtain. No jargon needed. Think of this system like an airport. You are the traveller. Your question enters through the client UI. That's the check-in desk. An orchestrator acts like air traffic control. It decides where your question should go, what information it needs, and how to keep things safe. A safety layer screens for sensitive info. Then Jack Transformer is the pilot, doing the actual flying, turning your question into a helpful answer. Along the way, it can fetch facts from retrieval, RAG, use tools and APIs like a calculator or web search, and even adapt to your memory profile settings. Finally, the reply returns to you as a streaming response, so you see words appear in real time. Let's recap. UI to orchestrator. Safety checks. Optional retrieval and tools. The GPT-5 brain. Then streaming back. That's the bird's eye view we'll unpack slide by slide. From inputs to tokens, encoders and context packing. Step 1. Turning your words, images or audio into something the model understands. Your input could be text, an image or audio. Each passes through an encoder, like translators for different languages. Text goes through a tokenizer, images through a vision encoder, and audio through a speech encoder. The result is a stream of tokens or embeddings, numbers the model can reason over. Next comes the context packer. The model has a context window, a maximum amount it can read at once. The packer prioritizes what's important, compresses and trims if needed, so your prompt, instructions and references all fit. A quick safety pre-filter also checks for sensitive personal information or policy violations before anything proceeds. Let's recap. Encoders translate your input, the packer arranges the backpack, and a pre-filter confirms it's safe to carry on. Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG. Now, what if the model needs up-to-date facts or specific docs? It doesn't guess, it looks. Query understanding reformulates your question into smart searches. A retriever looks in a vector database or search index for relevant passages. Then we do relevant scoring, deduplication and grounding, picking the best sources and anchoring the answer to them. Finally, a prompt builder stitches those snippets together with system rules and tool instructions, so the model sees the right facts at the right time. Let's recap. RAG fetches filters and frames real information so the model answers with support like citing a handbook during an exam great answers start with great instructions that's the core idea behind the prompt builder it isn't just a single line of text it's a structured way to guide the model the prompt builder brings together three key elements first are the system instructions these act like the model's job description setting its behavior and tone so it knows how to respond 
Second are the tool definitions, which describe the functions or actions the model can call on when it needs to do more than just generate text. And third are the retrieved snippets, relevant pieces of information that provide real context for the task at hand. The prompt builder also respects window management choices from the context packer, making sure only the most important details fit into the model's working memory. All of this is organized into a single, clear package called the Model Input Context. Think of it as the model's script. It tells GPT-5 who it is, what resources it has, and what facts matter most in the moment. So before the model writes anything, it first reads this curated packet, a balanced mix of rules, tools, and essential information. No extra clutter, just the right guidance. That's how we set the foundation for better answers. Every now we're in the cockpit. GPT-5 is really just a stack of identical transformer blocks, and each block has two main parts. ATTN, or multi-head attention, which lets the model look back at different parts of the context, like multiple radar screens, and an MLP, a multi-layer perceptron, that transforms those signals into richer patterns. These are tied together with ResNorm, residual connections plus layer normalization, which keep the system stable like guardrails on the flight path. To keep responses fast, the model uses a KV cache, short for key value cache, which is basically memory that remembers what's already been processed, so it doesn't have to reread the whole input every time. And then there's spec deck, or speculative decoding, a speed trick where a smaller co-pilot model drafts the next words, and the big model just checks or fixes them, which is why tokens stream onto your screen so smoothly. So, think of it like this, layers of attention to focus, KV as memory shortcuts, and spec deck as fast drafting, all working together to give you quick, coherent rep When words aren't enough, GPT-5 can take actions. Behind the scenes, a planner decides if a tool is needed. Maybe it's a calculator, a database lookup, or even an API. It makes a first move, what we call tool call number one, passing in arguments. The tool sends results back, GPT-5 parses them and then replans its next step. If more is needed, it issues tool call number 2, 3, and so on, repeating the loop until it has everything it needs. Only then does it draft a final, grounded answer, and of course that answer still runs through safety checks before it streams to your screen. So think of it like this. Plan. Call a tool. Read results. Iterate. Answer. It's like asking a smart assistant to go check and report back, but you get to watch the process unfold in real time. Personalization without losing control. GPT-5 doesn't just respond in the moment. It can keep a session state, like temporary notes, to track what's happening in the current conversation. And if you allow it, it can also read from a longer term memory or profile, which might include your preferences or recurring context. But everything passes through gating and privacy controls that decide exactly what can be read or written. If permitted, the assistant can even do a write-back at the end of a conversation, saving helpful facts for the future. The goal is simple. Output that feels personal, without surprises. And here's the recap. Memories are opt-in and auditable, giving you continuity when you want it, while strong guardrails keep your data safe. Safety is layered not bolted on. It begins the moment an input is received. First, a pre-filter quickly scans the request to catch anything obviously unsafe or out of bounds. Then, policy classifiers take a deeper look. They check for potential risks, the type of content, possible safety concerns, or sensitive information like personally identifiable data. If something is detected, the system doesn't just block it applies the right mitigation. That might mean refusing the request, redacting the sensitive part, or rerouting the interaction into a safer flow. The process doesn't stop there. On the way out, output filters review the model's response to make sure no sensitive or risky details slip through. And finally, watermarking and logging add a layer of accountability, supporting audits and responsible use. In short, safety is built into every stage. Inputs are filtered before they reach the model. Risks are classified mid-flight. Outputs are checked before they're delivered. And logs ensure transparency after the fact.
Multiple checkpoints, working together, reduce harm and make the system safer and more reliable. How did GPT-5 learn all this? It went through a layered training pipeline. The journey begins with pre-training, where the base model learns broad patterns from massive collections of text, audio and images. This gives it a wide foundation of general knowledge and reasoning ability. Next comes supervised fine-tuning, or SFT. Here, the model is guided with curated step-by-step -step examples that teach it how to follow instructions and perform specific tasks more reliably. After that, alignment takes centre stage with reinforcement learning from human feedback, or RLHF, and direct preference optimization, or DPO. In this stage, human feedback is used to compare responses, marking which ones are better or worse, so the model learns not just to be factually correct, but also helpful, safe, and aligned with human values. Finally, before release, the model faces rigorous evaluation. Evals and red team gates stress test safety, fairness, and quality under challenging scenarios. Only when a model passes these checks do we select a deployable checkpoint, the version ready to ship. In short, the process flows step by step. General learning, task shaping, preference alignment, intense testing, and then deployment. That's how GPT-5 becomes not only powerful, but trustworthy. How do answers stay fast when millions of people ask at once? The key is an optimized inference and scaling pipeline. It starts with a request router, which decides the best place to run your query. To maximize efficiency, batching groups similar requests together, so the system can process many at once without slowing down. During generation, techniques like key value caching and speculative or assisted decoding make token production much faster, reusing previous computations instead of starting from scratch. For very large models, sharding spreads the work across multiple machines, letting them share the memory load. At the system level, autoscaling ensures capacity expands during traffic spikes, keeping responses smooth even under heavy demand. And finally, results are streamed back to you token by token, so you start seeing the answer almost instantly, without waiting for the full response to finish. In short, smart routing, parallel hardware, and clever caching come together to deliver fast, reliable responses at massive scale. Why do the words appear one by one? That's because of how the model generates text. It works by turning logits, basically probability scores, into tokens which are the building blocks of words. Instead of holding everything back until the full paragraph is complete, the system streams each token as soon as it's confirmed. This design makes the experience feel much more responsive. You don't have to wait for a long block of text to load, you can start reading right away. Streaming also unlocks interactivity. You can stop the response midstream, ask a follow-up question on the fly, or let tools run in the middle of the output without starting over. In short, streaming trades a tiny delay for the first word in exchange for a much faster, more interactive overall experience. How does it keep getting better? The answer is a continuous quality and feedback loop. The system gathers telemetry and metrics, not the content of your conversations, but performance signals like latency, reliability and success rates. These give engineers a clear view of how the model behaves at scale. Next, teams run A-B tests. They compare different versions of the model or policies to see which produces clearer, safer, or faster responses. Offline, these insights feed into retraining the model or updating its safety rules. When the improvements are ready, a new release is shipped. Most importantly, user impact is constantly monitored. It's not just about making the system smarter. It's about making sure the answers you get are genuinely more useful safe and efficient. In short, measure, experiment, retrain, release and verify. A continuous cycle of improvement with users at the center of the loop. And that's the full breakdown of ChatGPT5, from layered safety to multimodal magic. Now it's over to you. How do you think AI will change the world in the next five years? Share your thoughts in the comments, I'll be reading through them. If this breakdown helped you see AI in a new way, hit that like button, subscribe for more deep dives, and share this with a friend who wants to understand where AI is heading. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.